Okay, today we're talking about a very important topic, we'll say, for suckler beef farmers, cow fertility. You know, ultimately, we'll say, for suckle beef, we'll say, production, you know, the, each cow must produce a calf. That's the only out within a 365-day interval, and that would be our target. And that's the only output, we'll say, from the farm. You know, unlike dairy, we'll say, where the farmer also produces milk, we'll say, the, the calf, we'll say, you know, and the timely production of a calf, we'll say, is key, we'll say, for suckler farmers. And we know, we'll say, from, you know, um, recent uh, data from the Irish Cattle Breeding Federation that unfortunately would we'll say Irish suckler beef production is quite inefficient at the moment would we'll say in terms of achieving reproductive targets would we'll say for the national herd. If you look for example would we'll say at the data, recent data over the last five years for example you know only about 20% of cows would we'll say achieve would we'll say our 365 day calf in interval. So really you know um, there are a number of issues we'll say that we need to deal deal with we'll say nationally. One of another important one we'll say is the lack of use of AI we'll say within the, the national suckler cow herd. Again we'll say if we look at the, the data from the Irish Cattle Breeding Federation, about fifteen to seventeen percent we'll say of beef cows produce a calf from uh, artificial insemination, while it's probably closer to, to 60 to 70 percent, we'll say, for dairy, for dairy cows. If we're serious about making, I suppose, genetic progress, we'll say, and I suppose, we'll say, uh, improving particularly the maternal traits of our national herd, we really need to get more of our beef cows and also our purebred cows, we'll say, which are really the cows that are producing, we'll say, you know, the stock bulls for use, we'll say, within the national herd, you know, bred through AI and using the very best uh, genetics. Another, I suppose, area that we're falling short on, we'll say, is our age of horse calving for our, uh, our, our national uh, herd of heifers. Again, if we ha set a target and we have a target there, an inimitably achievable target of 24 months, okay, most, the average uh, age of horse calving at the moment, we'll say in Ireland, is somewhere between 30 and 32 months. So there's a lot of inefficiency built into the system there. And this is particularly, you know, of relevance to those farmers that are actually producing their own heifers and they're keeping those animals, we'll say, for that extra six or eight months, we'll say, they're, you know, in an unproductive state. There are other issues, we'll say, then, in terms of, I suppose, the performance of the cow itself. If we take the suckler cow, we'll say, resumption of uh, cyclicity or heats will say uh, heat cycles after uh, calving will say is really really important okay in terms of will say the opportunity to breed the cow so if a cow calves down will say today for argument's sake she has roughly somewhere between 75 and 80 days will say to become pregnant again if that cow is to calf down at the same time next year in other words to achieve that 365 day or the 12 month calf interval and we know will say that the bond between the cow will say and the calf you know, which is not there in dairying, we'll say, uh, is a major limit limitation, we'll say, to the to to getting that cow to have cyclicity to come back uh, into heat again, we'll say, after calving, and. You know, there are certain, uh, I suppose, tools, we'll say, or approaches that we can take, we'll say, to try to, to minimise that period between when the cow calves, uh, when she's eligible for breeding again, and others when she starts having uh, normal cyclicity after calving. So, you know, one of the things that we've been doing, we'll say, quite successfully, and a lot of farmers are doing quite successfully, is trying to break the bond between the cow and the calf. So what we're advising farmers, really, is that once the cows hit, we'll say, particularly for the cows that calf early in the season, and they're still indoors, um, once cows calf, they're calved about 30 days or so, that those calves then could be um, suckled maybe twice a day, morning and evening, as opposed to having the normal ad lib access. And a lot of farmers now have the capacity to do this with, um, you know, creep areas, we'll say, or indeed maybe they have a paddock, we'll say, close by, we'll say, to the uh, to the shed, we'll say, where calves can be let out during the day, we'll say, and then let in again to suckle, we'll say, uh, their mothers, we'll say, in the evening time. And we know that if farmers, we'll say, um, use this approach that they will typically have you know 80 to 90 percent of their cows cycling within about three weeks and they, that will offer them more opportunities to breed that cow within about the 80 day period after calving and thus having a better chance of achieving that 365 day period. The other th critical factor we'll say from the cow perspective is body condition score and body condition score or the level of fatness on the cow will say is absolutely important at calving you know if cows calve down thin well then we know that those cows are going to be at least probably three weeks to a month later coming back into cyclicity after calving. So it's absolutely imperative that they calf down, not fat, but in, in moderate to, to good uh, body condition. So again, the target for spring calf and mature cow will be about a body condition score of two and a half at calving. For young cows for in their first and second parity, the target condition score for again for spring calvers will be in the region of about three, a condition score of three. The other major issue we'll say at farm level we'll say is bull fertility and it's becoming more and more to the fore in recent years. For example, uh, probably up to about 1 in 20 bulls are actually infertile, totally infertile, you know, not capable of putting a cow for a cow and calf. And also a more worrying figure almost is that up to 25% of bulls can actually be 
subfertile. So they're able to get cows in calf, but when the pressure comes on at the peak of the breeding season, their ability to put large numbers of cows in calf is not poor. And what does that do? It leads to extended calf and pastures and greater numbers of empty cows at the end of the season. So really we'll say farmers really need to be vigilant in terms of um, of use, we'll say, of uh, stock bulls. So ultimately we'll say a lot of the issues around uh, breeding, we'll say, for, for uh, in suckler cows are within the farmer's uh, own control in terms of the nutrition of the cow, we'll say, in terms of monitoring fertility, in terms of achieving targets, we'll say, both for heifers to calf and also for to achieving the 365 day calf and interval. And I think that all the tools are really there now at the farmer's grasp and it's really, we'll say, up to, you know, farmers themselves, we'll say, to improve management.